predict David Letterman will be wearing a tie. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, actress Jane Curtin, comedian from SCTV Martin Short, sportscaster Marv Albert, and dancers from the Rocksteady crew. Also, another visit to the Museum of the Hard to Believe, Stupid Petrix, and it's Fish Cleaning Day. And now, a man who is wearing a tie, like I told you, I know he would. I'm never wrong about these things. It's David Letterman! Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the show. My name is David Letterman. Uh, we're not normally on on Friday nights. Tonight we are on. Let me just say a couple of things about myself. I'm not proud of this. People say to me, Dave, what kind of a guy are you? For those of you who normally don't see us because we're not on on Fridays, let me just explain by saying I once shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> uh, we, uh, tonight is a special. Now, uh, let me define the word special. You ever go to uh, have lunch at uh, the Kmart luncheon counter? <laughs> And uh, a grilled cheese sandwich will be the special. Uh, that's, that's the kind of special we have for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, nice weather outside, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We, uh, at last, we got a, a decent... Uh, the problem with uh, springtime in New York City, when you switch to the lighter clothing, it makes it tough to conceal weapons. That's the only... Uh, uh, you folks, can you feel the electricity here tonight? Uh, we, we got a good show. Let me, uh, uh, let me just show you what kind of show. Uh, let me have that, Kevin. Uh, normally, how many, how many do we have on here usually? Three, four at the tops? Take a look at this show. <laughs> That's a show. Uh, I'll just uh, do this officially now for you. Actress Jane Curtin is here tonight. A very funny gentleman. I understand he's a friend of yours. Is this correct, Paul? Yes, he is. Mr. Martin Short. Mr. Well TV him. is here. <laughs> and uh, NBC sportscaster Marv Albert is here tonight. Uh, and these guys uh, are unbelievable. The dancers from the Rock Steady crew are going to perform for you on our floor tonight. Uh, also, stupid pet tricks tonight. <laughs> But the real reason you're here, <laughs> and the real reason there's an unbelievable traffic tie-up downstairs in Midtown Manhattan tonight. Uh, at home, you know about it from reading in TV Guide for weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and it's really a source of pride for me to be able to be a part of this. Tonight, on our program, Audience Fish Cleaning Night. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy, you're not going to believe it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is why television was invented. Uh, <laughs> Vladimir Zworkin developed the iconoscope tube for this very reason. Uh, please now say hello to Mr. Paul Schaefer, if you will. David, if you know me, you know something about me. You know that if I have a point, I make it. I make no bones about what I think. I say what I think when I think it. I say it. You know yeah. that about me. Yeah, I do. We all know that about you, Paul. Okay. Just, yeah, I don't have anything to say. Just want oh, to make okay. sure. <laughs> if I did, you would know that I would make it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, oh, it, uh, Steve is uh, touring in Japan, isn't He's he? Gone back to Japan. All right. Well, for so something. Re reintroduce our old friend We're Charlie. Thrilled to have him back. Mr. Charlie Drayton is, will be with us for the next, next couple of weeks on drums. All right, uh, Charlie, welcome back to the show. You know, ladies and gentlemen, man has always been fascinated by the unusual and the bizarre. Who can explain his mysterious attraction to the outlandish and the peculiar? He is strangely drawn to the unnatural and the weird. What is it about the fantastic and the unfamiliar that arouses his curiosity? The miraculous and the grotesque just seem to appeal to him, whatever the reason. Tonight we present another visit to that famous storehouse of the astonishing, yes, the Museum of the Hard to Believe. Walk this way, won't you? 
No, no, the music. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, here we are in the Museum of the Hard to Believe. This is an interesting exhibit. The Maku Anu bird of western Tanzania is also known as the camera bird. Now, there's a good reason for this odd name, for the nest that it builds is shaped remarkably like a photo mat. <laughs> remarkably like a photo mat. This is the nest right there. Uh, uh, this exhibit, uh, the remarkable Mr. Lamar, uh, Rommel J. Lamar of Cornwall, England, had a name spelled the same backwards and forwards. Hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, now, this is the, uh, oh, wait a minute, where are we now? The Wonder Man at the Wheel, that would be, oh, this guy right here. Uh, there's quite a story connected with this display. This is Bill McTesler. This man had to carry a load, so he went to a nearby agency and rented a truck. Incredibly, owning neither a TV or a radio has never heard the car and truck rental song. Hard to believe, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Now, here we have the paperweight that tricked destiny, this little beauty right here. By a bizarre twist of fate, a paperweight in Eugene, Oregon, was mistaken for an ashtray and used for that purpose for over 12 years. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess we're over here now. Now, here's an even more astounding individual. This is Sarah Bluestein. She actually laughed at the joke about the guy who rented the truck. Hard to believe, isn't it? Okay, now, here is an example of precision craftsmanship that's one of a kind. It's the entire Old Testament inscribed on an ordinary ice cube. Just take a... Oh, no. Oh, it's... Sal! Sal, uh... Yeah. What's the problem? Uh, who, who turned off the refrigeration unit to the uh, Old Testament inscribed on the ice cube? Dave, I needed the, the outlet for something else. I mean, I think it would hurt. Uh-huh. Oh, see, you, you didn't think it would hurt. Fine. Now, how are we going to replace this priceless exhibit? Look, I got a Bible at home. You want me to bring it in? No, no, no. Just take the display off. Mop up the exhibit. I'm awfully sorry you had to see this, ladies and gentlemen. Well... <laughs> Here we are, Mike Kalnosti, a 16-year-old boy who is not embarrassed to be seen with his parents. He actually, <laughs> he actually asks them to school dances and doesn't mind if they drive him on dates. Hard to believe, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, now, here's an exhibit that is uh, designed uh, to educate as well as startle. This is the longest word in the English language. It first appeared in action comics when a troop of jungle warriors were pitched over a cliff into a nest of giant bull scorpion below. Here then, the longest word in history. <laughs> the longest word in history. Oh, now you laughed at that one too. That's even more hard to believe. Uh, <laughs> uh, and finally, in one of nature's most remarkable examples of protective camouflage, the Midwestern lawn rattler has evolved a brightly colored tailbone that makes it inconspicuous in close-cropped grass, earning it the nickname of the Sprinkler Snake. <laughs> Give me a little music, maybe, Paul, would it would have helped us. Nicknaming it the Sprinkler Snake. <laughs> Truly hard to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to go away for a minute. We'll be right back. Remember, wake the young and phone the neighbors. It's fish cleaning night. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fine program. Jane Curtin is here, Stupid Petrix, Marv Albert, uh, the folks from the Rock Study crew, also from SCTV, Mr. Marty Short. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what can I tell you other than yes, tonight is audience fish cleaning night here at NBC. Yes.
That's right. Now, a lot of you are probably asking yourselves about this time, what is Audience Fish Cleaning Night? Ladies and gentlemen, it's an annual event held here at NBC, and it's just our way of saying thanks for 365 days of loyal viewership for the network. How does this work? Well, people in our audience tonight have received these special BYOF invitation tickets. <laughs> The tickets were mailed out a couple of weeks ago, and there are certain rules on the back. Let's quickly read the rules on the back. No more than 12 fish per audience member will be cleaned here tonight. All fish must be freshly caught and free of genetic abnormalities. So-called trash fish, such as carp, chub, and gar, will not be accepted. No betting is permitted at any time. We had a lot of trouble with this last year. And finally, all fish entrails become the property of the National Broadcasting Company and will not be returned. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you once again, we are only cleaning fish here tonight. There will be time for no boning or filleting, all right? Uh, also, when these special invitation tickets went out, there was enclosed a memo which indicated we will not be able to clean catfish or sturgeon. Uh, these are very difficult fish to clean. Uh, I have been informed by the ushers that some of you tonight in our audience did bring some catfish and sturgeon. I'm going to have to ask you at this time uh, to give them to the ushers as they go through the audience with the pails and just relinquish the fish. If we can... There they are. Just pass over. Okay. I'm sorry. We, we sent out the memos uh, nearly three weeks ago. Once again, this is all fish that has been brought by our studio audience that we'll be cleaning tonight. Uh, all right. If they've collected the unacceptable fish, uh, we'll give them back to you at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the magic moment is just about here. Uh, get a good grip on your fish, ladies and gentlemen, because now it's time to begin audience fish cleaning night. <laughs> Okay, if you're ready to come down here uh, one at a time and have your fish cleaned, let's meet the woman who will be conducting the ceremony for us. Do you have everything you need here? Yes. Okay, do you want to work this end or that end? What? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just <laughs> go over here. And uh, your name is? Mariel Hemingway. Mariel Hemingway. And uh, what do you... What, uh, and, and what do you do for a living, Mariel? I clean fish. You clean fish. Okay, great. Um, uh, all right, let's just get started now. Uh, bring on the fish, and uh, we'll start cleaning them one at a time. That's right, just... <laughs> There's some ugliness taking place up there. Oh, my. These, uh... <laughs> yes, come on down, ma'am. <laughs> come on around this way, if you will. What is your name? Florence Jeffrey. Florence, where are you from? Um, Britain, New Jersey. Uh, and do you know what kind of fish you have there, Florence? A sea trout. A sea trout. Okay, uh, Florence, this is uh, Mariel. She'll be cleaning it for you. And uh, remember, once again, we, we can't fillet right now, and we do no boning. We're just going to clean. So, uh, Mariel, if you just go ahead and uh, clean the fish. It's, now it'd be a good time to phone the neighbors, ladies and gentlemen. We, we'll be on the air cleaning fish until mm, 2 o'clock tonight. Is it 2 or how late are we on? Uh, till 2. Till 2 o'clock, cleaning fish. and. If you can get a nice tight shot of that, Hal, I... Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Yes. Oh. Wouldn't a tuna melt hit the spot just about now? Okay. You do a lot of uh, fish cleaning, Mariel? Oh, yeah, all the time. All right. And now we're a little scaling, so you're getting a little extra there. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, watch it. <laughs> you nearly hit someone there. I'm sorry. That's all right. This is okay. for all you late night eaters. <laughs> yep. Now that'll be nice uh, uh, when you get it home, maybe a little batter and. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> Well, you're not, you. you're not going to take... <laughs> okay. Well, you didn't know. <laughs> Would you like some coleslaw? <laughs> uh, you, are, you, you, are you not going to take the, the head and the tail off, or are you just... Oh, I thought you wanted to. Oh, yeah, a lot of people <laughs> do ask for the head and tail as kind of a souvenir. Okay. 
How much time do we have for this? About 30 seconds. Okay, 30 more Lana. seconds. And so come on and put that down here, ma'am. What, what is your name? Lana. Lana, and boy, that's a beauty. What is what is this guy? They told me it was a flounder. A flounder, and they, you, you said this was a pet? No, no, you didn't say that. <laughs> uh, okay, there you go. So now oh, she can okay. get that. Now the next is a flounder. Mariel, have you ever cleaned a flounder? This one's a little more difficult. Okay, a little more difficult. All right, so we're going to watch, uh, watch now as she cleans the flounder. This it's a good eating fish, isn't it? <laughs> This is hard. Okay. Look at all these folks lined up with their with their bright faces and their fish and they tried this a couple of months ago at Ted Koppel over at Nightline and it uh, <laughs> wasn't nearly this much fun when they did it over there. I uh, David Brinkley brought in a couple of I'm sorry. No, 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 you don't need to apologize. It's all right. We're here. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Now, that's, a, really that's an old ocean fish, isn't it? It's such a big fish, it has very little guts. Yeah, I'm that's right. a lot of meat on that fish, actually. <laughs> no. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's too bad we're not in 3D, isn't it? It would be... Uh, <laughs> Well, that looks good. Just put that on a bun, and you're ready. Uh, you're ready to go. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mara. All right, we have to go away for a commercial. Come on in, sir, and put your put your fish on the counter, uh, so to speak. Uh, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's fish cleaning night. Jane Curtin will be here. <laughs> back to the show. It's, uh, yes, uh, it is. It's fish cleaning night, and uh, we're having quite some fun here. Uh, my first guest uh, was one of the original Not Ready for Primetime players on Saturday Night Live. Uh, she is a very talented woman and recently became uh, a mother. Uh, please welcome Jane Curtin. You look good. I'm wearing the same clothes I've been wearing for the past eight years. Really? Why, why is that? Because I, I get into uniforms. Uh-huh. I, see, I agree with that. I yeah. think that's the way to go. Yeah. Find something you like, stay with it. Parochial school training. Uh-huh. But that's a, a very... Same colors, too. Very nice, though. You look, you look terrific. You always look terrific. And oh, uh, congratulations you. on the birth of your daughter. Thank you very much. What is her name? Tessie. Tessie. And yeah. uh, how long ago did this happen? Three months. Three months ago, she's real little. Yeah. And she's cute, though. Yeah. She's real cute. And uh, a bright baby? Very bright baby. The dog is still smarter than she is, however. Mm -hmm. she, doesn't, she doesn't match up on the current events as quickly as the dog does, but <laughs> she's working on it. Uh, and uh, a big, large child? No, your average size child. She's 6'4". Uh, she uh, takes after her dad. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, she's real cute. Yeah. She's a normal, everyday baby. But well, that's good. Uh, and uh, do, you, do you have uh, pictures? A lot of uh, all mothers? Well, have... unlike Al Franklin, uh, Frank and I don't carry them around in a briefcase. Uh -huh. But I do happen to have a, a sketch. Oh, sketch. You can. Sure, let's, uh, I guess we'll hold this up right here. This, this will is... be uh, uh, a <laughs> Uh -huh. um, auburn hair, as you can see. And that's, I mean, the perspective is wrong because you're sort of looking down at her. Uh -huh. You know, because I mean, her legs are the same, you know, the right size for a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that if you look down at the crib, the head looks bigger. This was, sure. Th well, this is a very nice picture and, yeah. and very thought. Did, did you just do this? While you're no, here? no, no. We had it done. Oh, you, 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 <laughs> you had that done. <laughs> You certainly got your uh, got your money's worth, Jane. That's very nice. Uh, now, uh, uh, this is your first child, isn't it? My first, yeah. Was was uh, pregnancy uh, any observations that you can share with us about that? Did you enjoy it? No. No, you just keep getting bigger, mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. And about the ninth month, you can't move, and you're just like a large orb. 
You sit yeah. in a chair. And you hyperventilate. And you eat. Huh. A lot. Yeah. Uh, do, is, is there anything to... Uh, they say that you crave uh, peculiar foods. Did you experience that at all? No. Yeah. No, I just ate everything. <laughs> just I was not discriminating in my, in my consumption yeah. at all. Uh, and so uh, now you're, you're just up there with your, your child up in... Uh, we don't want to say where you are, do we? Yeah, no. The same place as your director. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere in North America. Somewhere in North America. And having a nice time? Yeah. And you have uh, animals? I have a dog and a cat. And uh, the dog is bright and the cat is large. And uh, there's a red fox that lives, not the comedian, but the other <laughs> one that lives on our property. And we have deer. <laughs> it wouldn't be strange, though, if it was actually red fox the comedian living on we your land. We offered him space, but he turned it down, so we had to settle for the smaller one. Yeah. And uh, we have birds and we have... Uh, the deer ate my tulips, uh -huh. and I put in a lot of work last summer. Tessie and I dug those tulips together. Mm -hmm. And the deer just came in and got it. Just came right up and ate them. Yeah, you can get it like a high-powered rifle, and when it gets close. I don't. I don't like to shoot animals. No, I'm just talking about scaring them. No, no, no. I don't even like to scare them. Yeah. I invite them to dinner and they leave. Uh -huh. just, you see them walking across. You go, come on up, come on up, and they just run right off. Now, uh, I want. I want to find out if uh, you got a swell gift from NBC for the uh, child. I have not received anything from NBC. I was on this network for five years. <laughs> Not one gift from yeah. NBC. Thank you very much. It's under the thank crowd you. is hot. Thank they you. can't. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, we got to go away, but we'll return uh, with Jane Curtin, a new mother. <laughs> We got a, uh, this is an unbelievable show. Uh, Jane Curtin is here, obviously. Yeah. We have Stupid Petrix later. Uh, Marv Albert will be here. Uh, we have dancers that you will not believe. Marty Short is here. And uh, not to diminish what I've already said, but in addition to all of this, it's fish cleaning night, and we couldn't be happier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I wanted to mention to you, and the last time you were here, and I didn't get a chance, you're very good. I see you on the reruns of your old show. And you're really, really good on that. And Thank you. Uh, I, I Thank get a big you. kick out of that. Are you going to be, will people see you doing other things in the near future? I don't, uh, I don't know. As soon as I lose the weight that I gained, I'll, I'll get back to work. But I don't want to go to work fat. No, you, know, you don't look fat to me. Now, what did you weigh before you got pregnant? I weighed about 93 pounds. Yeah. That's petite. Yeah. <laughs> now I weigh 97, and God, you know, those yeah. five pounds Just are Just to lose those four or five, four and, you're, four. and you're ready to go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's so hard taking it off after you have a baby, you know? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, well, it's because of you ate so much. Of course, you wouldn't know. No, I wouldn't no. know. I've not, never had a child that yes. I, uh, yeah. Uh, now, uh, I saw you in a movie the other night also. Yeah, that's an old movie. Yeah, it's been on a few times. Now, yeah. uh, are you going to be doing more movies? I, I hope to be doing more movies. I uh, hope to be doing a, another made-for-television movie, but I, I want to... Be thin yeah. to do it, um, because I can't wear these clothes forever. Yeah. It just gets to be a little repetitious, and I think eight years is long enough. Yeah. Uh, I think you're being too hard on yourself. No, though. I'm not being too hard on myself, because people stop me on the street and saying, you're wearing the same clothes, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I... They're being hard on me. They're the ones that make yeah. me feel bad, Cruel not me. and nasty. Now, wh what do you do during the course of a day up there in the country? you got a lot of land, don't you? Got a lot of land, and I uh, get up about six, feed the baby, uh, uh, play with the baby, uh, let the dog out, make mm -hmm. coffee. It gets better. Uh, <laughs> then I feed the baby again. Wow. Yeah, now I it, do. It, it must be what, about 6.45 at this point? No, 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 no. It takes, it takes about an hour to feed her. And, oh, no, bit, oh, but first I change her. Yeah. Before I feed her, I change her. And I play with her while I'm changing her. And then we have a nice quiet feeding. And then as the day goes on, I let the dog and the cat out and in, depending on what they want at any particular time. There's no hard and fast schedule. No, on no, thing, no, yeah. no, no. I mean, it, we, you know, we grew up in the 60s. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I end up uh, feeding the baby for the last time at around 4.30. And then she goes to sleep for a while. And then 
My husband feeds her at midnight. Oh, that's great. They have a nice, quiet little dinner together, and they talk, uh -huh. and they eat candles. And now, now what the, can I ask you what your husband uh, does for a living? He's a producer. Uh -huh. And so he does a lot of producing there in the house? Well, obviously. Yes, he does, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. As a yeah. matter of fact, he helped produce the baby. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, turn of events this I is. I know, it's uh, because of the fish. Yeah, I know. Uh, and and uh, so you have a really nice uh, uh, rural, bucolic kind of uh, existence. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I get, I spend a lot of time looking out the window and uh -huh. seeing what's going on outside, yeah. and that's fun. Now, you, you have uh, uh, 28 acres? Yeah. Now, what do you got, anything planted up there? My tulips <laughs> that are now gone. Uh-huh. Oh, that's it. You well, have 28 I mean, acres of tulips? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you harvest them, put them in the silo, and... Send them to Holland, back where they came from. Get rid of those bugs. Uh, well, that's exciting. Yeah. Gee, uh, and, um, I'm exhausted, let me tell you. Yeah. It's, I mean, uh, commuting back and forth is bad, too, because we, you know, we have to drive two hours when we come to the city. Well, you don't come in that often, do you? No, but I'm here now. And yeah. I'm tired. You're beat. Yeah, I was up at six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I didn't have to let the dog and the cat out, which is good. It takes a lot off my yeah, uh, schedule. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, for one, will look forward to uh, your uh, return to show business. You haven't retired or anything, have you? No, no, I haven't retired, um, but the cellulite is keeping me back. Oh, yes. stop. No, I, I have trouble believing this. You're, a, you're a handsome so female. And, well, uh, thank you very much, yeah. Dave. You're a uh, handsome male. Uh, no, no, you don't yeah, need to no, say that are, crap. Uh, you really are. Uh, th and and uh, my double thanks for being here. On fish cleaning night, Jane. I'm I was good. Thank you very much. This is Jane Curtin, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with stupid pet tricks at the Epic Lady List. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for Stupid Petrix, but before that, I have, uh, thank you, uh, I have an announcement to make. In the course of cleaning one of the mackerels, I believe it was, a class ring was found inside the fish. Now, the owner may claim it uh, on the mezzanine after the program, so. Uh, uh, stupid Petrix, uh, let, me let me explain how this is done. Uh, we have uh, people who bring in their pets, and they do stupid things right before your eyes. Uh, on network television, and uh, we're very excited about it. And our first participant here tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Bloomberg. Michael? <laughs> Hi, Michael. Hi, How are you? Nice to see you. And uh, this is your dog, Boots? Boots, yeah. Hi, Boots. What kind of an animal uh, we got here Probably on Boots? A Welsh Terrier. A Welsh Terrier. Does he know that? Uh, I think so. This is a great-looking doggy. How old a boy is he? He's going to be five in August. Okay, and what will uh, Boots do for us tonight, well, he uh, Michael? Oh, water. He jumps for water, water. okay? And you have a, a container of water. Here. You're sure that's just water? Um, sure. Okay. Uh, anything you need from me? No, unless you want to try it yourself. Well, maybe after I get the hang <laughs> of it, uh, you can you try it once and maybe I'll try Boots. it. This they is Michael Bloomberg and Boots, ladies and gentlemen. Jump. Jump. Come on. Whoa! Come on, jump. Come on, Boots. Whoa! Up, up, up. Come on, Boots. <laughs> Come on, Boots. Up, high. Go on. Come on, jump. Now the... Oh. Yeah. Big one, big yeah. one. There we Whoa. go. Whoa! All right, one more. Ah, it's getting, Gee, many. getting into it now. That's unbelievable. <laughs> take, a, take a look at the uh, instant replay there, Michael. There's your dog, Boots, in slow motion. Boy, that's no... But here, look. You... Oh, you want to try it? No, let me see. You're just... You've, uh, you've, come here, you're going to have to squeegee his snout. Look at all this. Come here, Boots. Look <laughs> at his light. face is just drenched. Oh, well, he's all excited. When was the last time this dog had any water, Michael? Oh, about two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> thing is, thing is spring-loaded. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> that's Boots. Very, uh, very exciting. That was Boots. Our next uh, participant tonight is uh, Nancy Chessed. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We'll find out in a minute. Nancy? How are you? What is your last name, Nancy? It's 
Chusett. Chusett, I'm sorry, I goofed it up. Nice to meet nice you. To and meet you. Uh, we have here a bigger version of the other guy, huh? <laughs> uh, this is your dog, Shasta? Shasta. Shasta. And what kind of dog uh, is She's this? She's an Airedale. An Airedale, okay. Hi, Shasta. How are you? Very similar to the other dog, isn't she? Yeah, she's a little older. Well, how old a dog do we she's have? She's almost 12. Here? Could I see some identification? <laughs> uh, okay, all right. And uh, Shasta will obviously... She plays the piano. Playing the piano. Shasta Shast will play the... You need any help from the band, Nancy? Well, maybe... Uh, what let's see. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she's a very avant garde. Shasta will be playing the piano here right after she takes a nap. <laughs> You know that feeling, don't you, Paul? Come on, Nancy. Or Shasta. Come on. Yeah. That's great. That's terrific. You want to take a look at this in slow motion instant replay? Once again, Shasta playing the Yeah. <laughs> terrific. Thank you very much, Nancy. Nice meeting you. See you, Shasta. Bye bye. <laughs> good, huh? The dog is good. Uh, John Comack is our next uh, person here. John? Hi, John. How are you? Nice to see you, sir. Thank you. And uh, your dog's name is? Brandy. Brandy? And a uh, man or a woman there? Uh, she. A she. And what will Brandy do for us tonight? Oh, I call it the G.I. Joe crawl. The G.I. Joe crawl. You, right. Brandy is sort of checking things out here. Yes, you know, she likes to look around. It's a good-looking dog. You had her uh, recently uh, done up, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they got the, uh, the occasion. handkerchief. Hi, Brandy. How you doing? Nice to see you. Like a little fish? <laughs> uh, what kind of... <laughs> what kind of dog did you say that was, or did you? I didn't. It's a mutt. It's all. Oh, it's a mutt. Okay. <laughs> and uh, going to crawl like G.I. Joe. I'm going to try it. Okay. Brandy will be crawling... Perhaps not in this studio, but <laughs> that's a well, well-mannered uh, dog. Come on, oh, sit down. Wait, wait, no, it's not right. I'm gonna do it again. Not... Ooh, what is, what is? Brandy's eating something nasty here. Okay, Brandy will be crawling uh, on her stomach, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in. Okay, come on down, GI Joe. Stay down. Stay down. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, John. Nice meeting you. Thank you, Brandy. Come on, Brandy. Come on. Brandy. Over here. Come on. There you go. Oh, right, right out there. Right over there. There you go. It's time to go home. Uh, all right. Our next uh, participant here in Stupid Pet Tricks tonight, uh, Sherry Haynes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Sherry Haynes. Hi, Sherry. And uh, nice to meet you, Sherry. Oh, oh and, nice to meet you. And and uh, these are <laughs> these are these are gnats. Is that correct? <laughs> what? Oh, what, what kind of dogs do we have here? Boston Terriers. Boston Terriers. Bean and Anthony. Beans and Anthony. Be <laughs> ah, what a lovely disposition on this guy. Uh, uh, what are, what are they going to do, uh, are Sherry? Gonna jump and bounce the balloons on their face. <laughs> oh, All right, they're going to jump and bounce the jump. balloons. Whoa!
Slow motion? All right, there's a little bit. These dogs would be nice on a long car trip, wouldn't they? Take them in the backseat of your station wagon. Thank you very much, Sherry. Very impressive. Nice meeting you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, that's it. Stupid pet tricks. Uh, we're going to pause here for a commercial. We'll be back to talk to Marv Albert. And uh, again, uh, if you want to have, have some fish at home and you'd like to jump in the car and drive down here to the studio, tonight is fish cleaning night. Uh, my next guest, not only uh, the voice of the New York Knicks, uh, the New York Rangers, and an NBC sports commentator, but he is also the guardian of the prestigious Albert Achievement Awards. It's a pleasure, as always, to welcome Mr. Marv Albert. Hi, I'm Marv. Nice to see you again, sir. All right. You have uh, 24 hour security uh, on the uh, on the awards. You know. oh, oh, yeah, that's right. As the guardian, yes. Uh, let me ask you before we get to the uh, the awards. Uh, uh, tell me, this is a, a really hectic time of year for you. You're doing the Rangers recently eliminated, right? right? Gone. And the Knicks still in contention, right? Uh, does is that confusing for you? Well, let's see. And boxing also, boxing, which sure. we have going on uh, usual on, on Sundays. Uh, at times. There can be problems. I used to feel right after expansion in the National Hockey League when uh, suddenly the league jumped from 6 to 12 and then to uh, uh, 18 teams, there were so many players, so many teams, and I always felt, particularly for radio games, people really didn't know the players when the league first expanded. I, I thought at one point I could actually go on the air on radio, not that I would ever do this, but could make up names of yeah, players. Yeah. <laughs> and if you throw in words, key hockey terms like uh, poke check, four check, uh -huh. and uh, a couple other key words, icing, offsides, you'd have them fooled. Right. With fictitious names. Sure. I would never do that. No, you would never do no. that. No, I would never. Uh, never uh, you you want to uh, give us a shot uh, here about the uh, ch chances for the Knicks? They're 0-2 uh, mm, now. At this point, uh, coming, well, we're now Friday with this show, mm -hmm. and they play uh, game three on uh, s uh, tomorrow, then Saturday, uh, off the 20-point lead that they blew yeah. Wednesday night in Philly. Uh, it will be very, very... <laughs> <laughs> Fans from Philadelphia here. They come from all over. Oh, yes. It will be... Uh, I, I think the Knicks have come a long way this year. I don't think people expected they would do as well as they, they have, but uh, they appear to be overmatched by the overmatched. 76ers. 76ers, but now, and now, now what about the, the Lakers? What do you think of the Lakers? Are they going to go all the way? A couple of key injuries, I, I think, because of the absence of uh, rookie uh, James Worthy. Bob McAdoo is uh, making it back from injury. Uh, the Albert selection earlier this season was L.A., but mm -hmm. I have been wrong. I've mm -hmm. had some problems uh, in that area nope. uh, uh, this year, but I... I, I, I like the Sixers this season, okay. not because you folks are here from Philadelphia, but uh, I think this finally will be uh, the year that the doctor and uh, with the addition of Moses Malone, I, I think finally the Sixers will win it. And the Pacers, I guess, they're pretty much uh, over. They, they're uh, resting. They're, they're looking at uh, Philip they, they're just Samson. Sold. They're just sold, I understand. Yes. Uh, uh, but New they're going to stay in Indianapolis. That'll well, be good. If, yeah, if they can get uh, the big guy in the middle, uh, I think it'll turn things around. Indianapolis as you know, is a oh, hotbed sure. of basketball. Who's your hysteria, as yes. they say? Unfortunately, it's been a hotbed of high school basketball, yeah. which has not helped the, uh, the Indiana Pacers. Uh, Marv, uh, the Achievement Awards. Yes. Uh, this is saying. the reason most of the people are here. I guess second I to fish cleaning that. night. Take us now to right. the Albert Achievement Awards. We have released the security on the awards as the uh, guardian, our crack staff, uh, our producer Dave Gat Katz has uh, put it together. So uh, if we can throw the cue and watch the monitors at home. Here are the Albert Achievement Awards right. for the past uh, couple of months. Let's take a look. Okay. Basketball had a chair of heavy hitting in the playoffs last week. Paul Westfall of the Knicks feeling the brunt of Daryl Dawkins of the Nets. Boston Atlanta playoff last Sunday. Tree Rules throwing the elbow at Danny Ainge. They had been going at each other earlier. This free-for-all, Rollins bites Ainge. Ainge required five stitches and a, a tetanus shot. No biting of the scrabble between Detroit and Denver. They just cannot locate the basketball. Some bruising baseball recently off the base hit. Watch the runner, Bob Horner. Oh! Oh! Ron Hodge.
Dodgers oh, in the mix. Now the foul pop. Bruising play by Dave Engel of the Twins. Several embarrassing moments this month. San Diego Padres in action, having difficulty playing the bouncer. <laughs> Catcher Rick Cerrone of the Yankees loses the pitch. Where's the baseball? Yes, it was in Rick's glove. And the Yankees providing an adventure in the outfield. Now some bean balls of note. Mike Marshall of the Dodgers decked by Jeff Reardon of Montreal. Fortunately, Mike is okay. Now watch Dave Winfield of the Yankees. He is dusted by Detroit's Dave Rosemar. Rosemar says, wait a second. Rosemar, these people like violence. I don't believe it. Fielding gems of the month. Gary Reedus of the Reds. Sparkling catch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yankee Stadium. Beautiful play by Tom Bernanski of Minnesota. Now watch this effort. Len Hubbard of Atlanta ends the ball game. Now some odd moments in the world of sports. Craig Stadler from close range blows the putt. Now gives himself the old choke sign. <laughs> Detroit Pistons rookie Cliff Levingston into a sideline left. Now this just an innocent halftime show until an unscheduled <laughs> visitor drops by. Watch this. Who is this guy? All right, back to basketball. Jim Braddock of North Carolina draws a charge from a cheerleader who thought play had stopped. Trent Tucker of the Knicks, shaken up, heads to the bench, gets worse. And Buck Williams of the Nets, taken for a ride by Kenny Carr. Now we close with the incredible. Philadelphia's Andrew Tony fling buzzer shot, yes. Now watch this very closely. A shot by George Gervin of San Antonio, rejected by James Donaldson, off the head of Danny Greens. One more look. Shot by Gervin, blocked by Donaldson. Greens with the header. That's great. Thank you. Very nice. Makes it easier, all sports going at the same time. Giving yeah, us, well, uh, that's, that's one of your better batches, I think. Those are very nice. The crew working overtime this uh, yeah. well 90 minute special yeah, yeah. that's right sure yeah, yeah, uh, anything through. goes uh, what about uh, baseball off to a good start what are, what are the Yankees now they're uh... Yankees uh, at this hour are uh, at the 500 mark it, uh -huh. it's been in and out uh, I think that uh, Billy Martin has had a couple of people not in the doghouse but under the doghouse yeah uh, and uh, he got a good effort the other night from Bob Shirley who had not pitched well earlier uh, still very, very early to tell. Of course, the Albert prediction Mets? was Yankees. Oh, it was I Yankees. Say. Yeah, I, I hate to... In the American League. The uh, how about the Mets? The Mets are just... Uh, Mets going... still in spring training, aren't Going they? nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of problems. And uh, in a battle for last with, uh, I know, one of your favorite clubs, the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's good to see Tom Seaver back, but he has not been able to... Uh, First two games pitched well yeah. and uh, did not uh, get a decision, then won a game, and then he was shelled in his last outing. Yeah. So uh, it, it's the Mets uh, really have a, a host of problems. I really don't understand what they have been doing. Uh, Marv, anytime you want to come over here, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, Thank sir. Thank you. Marv Albert, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Nice uh, we'll be right back here. You're going to meet the uh, dancers from the Rock Steady crew, and Martin Short is uh, also on this program. Thank you, Paul. Very nice, gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I need to make another announcement. We've been getting some complaints from the NBC News Department. Please do not put any discarded fish in the evening news studio. Uh, apparently, according to this, John Chancellor's chair has been ruined. Please use the disposal facilities right here in our own studio. And uh, we, we want to make this an annual event, so let's don't screw it up, okay? Uh, you know, we've had a lot of fun tonight, and we certainly have cleaned a lot of fish, and that's all well and good. But I have a simple philosophy. Clean a man's fish and he eats tonight. Teach a man to clean a fish and he eats for the rest of his life. Now, the audience has seen plenty of old-fashioned 
cleaning tonight, but there's a real trick to filleting a fish. So uh, I brought in a short film that I made over the weekend on this subject, and you're going to see me. Paul came out to the house, and we went out and got some pretty good-sized striped bass. And let me just now show you via this film uh, the technique to filleting a fish. This was fun, wasn't it, Paul? There it is. We just uh, got it right out of the boat. You need a really good sharp knife, and you cut forward to the, just behind the gill, and then the trick here is to keep it right up next to the bone, and when you begin to pry it away, this was good eating, wasn't it, Paul? Mm-mm, Dad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you you want to watch for all the tiny little bones, and uh, we had plenty of sun that day, I can tell from my hands. Now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just just cut it back to the tail like that. There you go. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Just that's how you fillet a fish. That was fun. We I didn't realize you were such a fisherman. Well, you know, it's just one of the many things that uh, yeah. you don't know about. It was great, I, wasn't it? I like to do. We had a I had we'll a do that again. Let, let's have you and me and the whole band will do it. These guys have been asking me when are right. going to take us up to Dave's house to go fishing. And I said, you know, be cool, but that's nice. Let's All right, do we'll do that. Don't you worry. You mark that on your calendar. You know, uh, one of the most spectacular developments in the entertainment field, aside from this program tonight, uh, has been the emergence of a form of dancing called breaking. And the most exciting breakers are a New York group called the Rocksteady Crew, featured in the new motion picture, Flashdance. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is not to be believed. Please welcome two members from that group, Crazy Legs and Ken Swift. Very impressive, gentlemen. Uh, tell me, uh, you guys got your breath yet? Can you talk? You, you all right? Uh, what, how did the, what is the origin of, of this? This is uh, you're uh, Ken Swift, right? Yeah. Ken, what is uh, the origin of what you guys are doing? Well, we started out when we was younger in the streets. Uh huh. And like, it all evolved from you know street jams. Uh huh. What, now, uh, exactly what is a street jam? <laughs> so, uh, a DJ comes out with turntables. Yeah. And a mix and everything. 
Stop playing music, everybody comes. Start dancing. Uh, and, and <laughs> but but who but who was the first guy to decide that he could spin around on the street like that? How, how did that? <laughs> how did that happen? Everybody started doing it at the same time. Yeah. And all that from what, like, it was taken from a lot of different dances, right? Mm -hmm. Then it was combinated into one. Yeah. Then from there, we developed our own original styles. So right now we're like. We're the last of the original dancers that still dance. Uh, now, did you uh, go from neighborhood to neighborhood uh, uh, having competitions with other, other yeah. people? Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, you're generally regarded as the best in the city right now, huh? Mm hmm Now, do you still go out and compete? Nah, Not really, because, you know, we do a lot of shows now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, uh, were these friendly competitions? Yeah back in those days <laughs> these days people the we call them new jacks new jacks was, yeah because <laughs> they're new to the scene right yeah they think they could come out of nowhere and just um steal our style and just do it against us i wouldn't mind if they you know it's nothing like using the basics but when you um steal our own originality you know it, it looks like every time when your guys go down from the other group, it looks like the same person. Yeah, so they're imitating what you guys yeah. originated. Yeah. yeah. Did, uh, uh, any trouble? Fights? Any of that? Yeah, some in, back in the old days we did. Yeah, but but a lot of people were jealous of us. Yeah. Yeah, but you know. But so now we don't waste. We don't even waste our time battling them. Oh, that's good. Now, do you, do you ever get hurt doing this stuff? Mm-hmm. Not me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> We get, we used to get like scratches on our backs. I can understand that. Nothing. You know, <laughs> but they were little like you know a yeah. little raspberry, you know, <laughs> once in now. Street burns, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, uh, how come this has become so popular? It's, it's not really that new, is it? Or it's been out for twelve years. Yeah. Now, how come suddenly you're getting a lot of attention? You're you're in uh, ma magazines and uh, this motion picture and well, stuff. Well, back in them days, it was just we used it for ourselves for pleasure. Mm -hmm. We never thought about using it for business and making money. Yeah. My shoelaces. I was going to ask you about your shoelaces. What the uh, They're fresh? No, no. What is that? <laughs> what is that? How did you do that exactly? Well, I got them and I put them on. <laughs> <laughs> but they're elastic, really. They're really elastic. But how now? How do you tie those? They're tied you from don't. the inside. Oh, you just don't tie them. In. See, I see. You just no socks. okay. You tie them in. Uh, and you guys are, are are making some dough with this. That's great, huh? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. We've been to Paris and London. Yeah. yeah hopefully, and hopefully, in the summer we'll go to Japan and London again. Yeah. Uh, what What does the term breaking mean? What is the origin of that? Exactly how you see it. Breaking. <laughs> That's breaking. That's breaking. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, don't try it. Because I've seen <laughs> professional dancers say, oh, I could get it. I've been dancing for years. I said, yeah, go ahead. Like, in flash dance, they were yeah. trying to know how to do the spin. I said, yeah, it's, it's not bothering you. Next day I saw them, they had pads over here, black and blues all over their yeah. body. <laughs> it's very impressive. You guys are terrific. Uh, Ken, nice meeting you, sir. Thank you. Crazy nice Thank you for being here, guys. Uh, we'll be right back with Martin Short from SCTV. I need to make one, one other announcement. With the gentleman who brought the manta ray, please retrieve it. We are not allowed to clean rays or skates. Now, this is not our policy. This is an RCA Corporation policy. Once again, my apologies for the inconvenience there. Uh, my next guest is certainly one of the funniest people on television today. When he is not appearing on this show, he can be seen on SCTV, also on this network. Let's take a look now and uh, see a little bit of Martin Short in action on that program. Ladies and gentlemen, watch the monitors. And at home, as always, use your television sets. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Martin Short.
Martin, how are you? Nice to see you again, sir. Well, that's uh, that's very funny. That's thank you. Really nice, and you uh, uh, you do terrific work on the show. And, oh, thank and you. thanks for coming back. Um, you, in addition to stuff like that, you do some people, uh, not, not famous characters, but characters that you have invented. Uh, Ed Grimley. Ed Grimley is a character that I do. Um, uh, kind of a visual character. He kind of talks like this, you know, and his hair is up. You really have to have the whole visual <laughs> get it, Dave. No, but no, his, his hair is up. I mean, it's, it's way up, isn't it? It's stuck up this high, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's that concept <clears throat> of when in doubt, go big and physical and don't worry about the words. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, uh, now, did you ever know anybody with his hair way up there? What, what is no, the... No, no, well, uh, actually, but uh, you, you find that you get these characters from uh, people you know. There was a guy who used to live uh, below my brother named Craig Steubing, and he was kind of an 80s um, a screamer. He was an 80s screamer. Uh, kind of a, he was a designer, really. <laughs> and it's, it's not so, it's more of a wine 80s, you know, the kind of uh, stereotypical screamer of the 60s that Jonathan Winters did, uh -huh. for example, yeah. is out. <clears throat> you know, now it's more whiny, it's more tired, exhausted. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I just have problems with it generally. I mean, that's a general attitude. Uh -huh. I, mean, I was once, <laughs> I was once passing his apartment. He lived below my, uh, below my brother, and, and this is truthful. He, he was a designer, and he used his apartment as a, an office, and I heard him screaming on the phone. He was angry, uh -huh. and he had said, I had ordered a Peggy Lee White. Now, what the hell goes here? <laughs> a Peggy Lee White. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I took that voice completely and did it on stage in, in Second City. Yeah. And actually, uh, uh, I used to do a routine as a hairdresser. Actually, you can help me with this. If oh, goody. When I point to you, yeah. you say you're kidding. Okay. So he's doing someone's hair and he's saying, you know, I know Liz, per Liz Taylor personally. You're kidding. Absolutely. I remember <laughs> in 1968 when she and Dickie were staying at the King Eddie Hotel, I did Liz's makeup. You're kidding. I wouldn't lie. I remember this one day, I was doing Liz's eyes and they really are violet too. And Dickie kind of came bursting into the hotel room and the two of them got into the most vitriolic argument I have ever seen. I mean, I literally freaked out. And they shoved me into a washroom with a ball of sculpt. I remember it vividly. And in 15 minutes, I drank the bottle, got drunk, and sobered up again. I mean, I was literally <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> but one day, I was doing that on stage, and, and I looked, and, and the guy, whose name I will not say, uh, was the, actually... The actual guy. The, the actual yeah. guy, whose voice was clearly no exaggeration of mm -hmm. this, was sitting right there. Mm. So I quickly went from this to saying that Liz Taylor is so dynamic because she has this power over people. I looked down and said, you know, you know, she's a really good broad. <laughs> <laughs> and change. It didn't get any laughs, but I didn't get punched out. Oh, that's good. Uh, you don't know if the guy was flat or defended. You don't care. No, 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 not really. Well, I mean, it, it was his voice. Yeah. I mean, he, he can't deny that yeah. that's what he spoke. Uh, we have to go away for a commercial, Martin, and uh, we'll be right back to continue right. this. Thank you for being here, Martin Short is here. Uh, where does that begin if you're doing an impersonation of a person? Well, it's tricky. Uh, if, if you want to do... Uh, I did Jerry Lewis on one of the shows, and, and, and I, I, the Lewis, the young kid Lewis was... You know, I had that from a long time ago. <laughs> but the hardest thing was getting the today Lewis, and I found that once I cracked the laugh, and I, I would listen to the laugh, and finally I realized that it was just... It was kind of a variation of London Lee's laugh, but it wasn't. It was my... <laughs> <laughs> so then once you get, <laughs> you know, the thing is uh, that uh, they're afraid of a perfectionist, the studios. And if a Jerry Lewis anchor to get a distribution deal because of some fakak, the 12-year-old with the pimples on his face, who's head of the studio this week, who doesn't know from Hardly Working or the Aaron Boy or whatever, who only knows from Eva Braun with the big Fohaben or the airplane crashing through the thing. <laughs> Where is a Jerry Lewis supposed to find the love and the caring and the feeling and the good and the nice? And even if you do, it's not the good kind because of the variation of the different thing. <laughs> now, um, uh, we have some videotape of you doing somebody that, uh, I guess if you thought about it, 
it, it would become apparent that sooner or later people would be doing him. But I, you, I guess you were the first one to actually do this man, huh? Yes, I believe so, yes. All right, this would be uh, it's a... It's a Tang commercial. A Tang commercial, and do you want to tell them who you're doing, or just let them be pleasantly surprised? If or? they don't find out, then it was... Okay, uh, let's just... We'll, we'll, we'll roll it, we'll and see what the who, hell. Yeah. All right, this is, uh, once again, uh, Mr. Martin Short, uh, a scene uh, from a recent SCTV television program. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, right on the money. Oh, uh, tell me about, uh, now, what is the status of the program now? Uh, SC well, I guess SCTV is, uh, canceled. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's not going to be on at 12.30 to 2 on NBC, that we know. Mm -hmm. It will probably be moved to 4.30 to 6 on Sunday. <laughs> um, Opposite Catholic Mass, uh, that seems to be the... Now, there, there, must, there must be another life uh, for this program, don't you think? No, I, there are certain, I mean, there are discussions going on about different people interested in doing the show, and, and I think that we'd like to do a movie t together. The money. The, everyone gets along so great, and yeah. they've known each other for so many years, and it's such a good working situation that I don't think anyone wants it to end, you know. Yeah. And... But you don't, you can't say any, at this time what's what's going on. Well, no, there. nothing's really resolved right now. I'm yeah. just uh, hanging down, out down here, cleaning fish. <laughs> um, well, you're certainly a terrific addition to the uh, an already great cast, and uh, you know, good luck uh, with everything, Martin. And thank you very much for being here again. <laughs> thank you, David. Yeah. Mr. Martin Short, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Uh, Martin, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank our studio audience. You folks were terrific as always. Uh, also, my thanks to Mariel Hemingway tonight, Jane Curtin, again, Mr. Martin Short from NBC Sports, Marv Albert, uh, Paul Schaefer, and the organization. Thanks, guys, for being here. Uh, also, thanks to Bill Wendell, our announcer. Monday, actress Louise Lassie will be here. Have a good weekend. Good night, folks.